Good afternoon, world of Facebook. I've got get one of my cats nicking my water. He likes drinking out the glass. <laughs> and I drink out of a bowl. <laughs> Love bubbles. So, Donna Michelle Hammersley here, body mind coach. And the reason I'm a body mind coach is because everything is interlinked. You know, we can't just work on our mindset without working on our body because our emotions express through our body and if we don't express them if we don't deal with them if we try and repress them or ignore them that's when they show up as as illness or disease or just aches and pains i mean i was talking about yesterday the fact that my shoulder i had a pain in my shoulder and i realized i would having a conversation with my body that i think it was because yesterday i'd spent ages going over and over like the fact that my marriage is broken down i spent ages going over oh i should have done this what if i'd done that you know, I should have blah, blah, blah. And I, I realized that my shoulder felt like it was stuck. And our left side is often associated with our past. And after having a conversation with my body, I realized it may have been because I was kind of stuck in the past. Because the truth is, we cannot change the past. We can learn from it. We can grow from it. But we can't change it. And so often we spend or waste time and energy going over and over stuff that we wish we'd done or things we wish we'd done differently or things we wish we hadn't done and stuff like that and that can cause got itchy eyes now that can cause or, or exacerbate things like anxiety you know if you're the type of person prone to uh, that kind of thing that can exacerbate it as well and just lower your vibration so thankfully because i'm kind of in tune with my body and now i never used to be and I try and listen to my aches and pains instead of just rushing and taking a painkiller. I can usually get to the get to the bottom of it because what happens is our body is always talking to us, always, always talking to us. It tells us when we're hungry, it tells us when we're tired, it tells us when to wake up, it tells us when to go to sleep. It's always talking to us. But the problem is, if we feel an ache or pain, we tend to just either rush to the doctors, and no offense to doctors, they do an amazing job, but the medical profession in the West focuses purely on symptoms it doesn't focus on what caused that particular illness or ache or pain whatever they only give you um pills whatever for symptoms it's like when i had ibs i had really bad ibs symptoms for a couple of years and i had two separate doctors tell me that ibs is normal now that's bullshit because a, a, a healthy digestive system you should not suffer bloating. You should not suffer chronic constipation. You should not suffer fatigue. Any of those, it's become normal because so many people have it. And that is a big issue because if I wasn't me, if I didn't know that it's not normal, I wouldn't have continued uh, exploring and I wouldn't have eventually found out that it was soya, soya milk that I was reacting to. Get rid of the soya milk, no IBS. But we have lost touch with our, our own intelligence and because we don't have a degree we don't have a degree in science or biology or whatever and because some of us don't even know where our various body parts are we put all our faith in the medical profession and none in ourselves now, i'm not saying don't put any faith in the medical profession i'm saying trust in your own innate wisdom you know sometimes we just have a knowing about something we don't know how we know and because we don't know how we know we then second guess ourselves so we've kind of lost touch with our with our body with listening to what our body's trying to tell us and i think sometimes anxiety can be a massive um message to us so i talked a lot about anxiety yesterday and because it's such a massive topic i wanted to kind of break it down because the idea is not to overwhelm you even further and interestingly uh, a friend of mine a fellow coach she did a, a live uh, last night about anxiety and that kind of thing especially about what's going on at the minute hey emma how are you doing and she made a really good point which is that a lot of people who struggle with anxiety are probably very sensitive and they probably uh, identify themselves as an empath, or maybe they don't even realize what an empath is. Now, an empath is someone who kind of really uh, picks up on other people's emotions and energies, and it's almost like they absorb them. So with an empath, if they were with someone who was going through grief, for example, they would physically feel 
that kind of grief in themselves. And the thing is with empath, especially if you're not aware of it, you can be soaking up other people's energy. It's like walking into a room and there's a bad vibe. You know, if you're an empath, you may kind of like take that on as your own and not understand that it's not yours. Now, I'm not an empath, thank God, because it can be quite hard work. I can empathize. I can listen to someone and be compassionate and understanding and try and put myself in their shoes. But thankfully, I can not I don't take on that energy but some people who are empaths or who may not have even heard of the term but you are an empath may absorb that energy and especially with all the energy going around at the minute I mean this year has been I think pretty much all of us have experienced every emotion possible this year I mean you've got the two definite kind of camps you know the people who have been living in fear who've been who've been you know doing all the all the all the right things you know staying at home being fearful of meeting with people this that and the other and you've got the other side that are kind of like the more in touch with their spirituality kind of side and who um are seeing it as a change in the energy a massive shift we're actually shifting from masculine energy which we've been under for many many years now the masculine energy is very go-getting very kind of dominating very problem solving very kind of um strong and forceful and we're moving into more of a feminine energy a more creative intuitive go with the flow kind of thing and there's a lot of you know I don't want to get into conspiracy theories and things like that hey lovely but you know it, it's just that we've all experienced every emotion possible this year I mean I myself have you know going through my divorce on this one hand I feel happier because um, I'm no longer having to lie to myself I realize now how much I was lying to myself so that is kind of liberating but there's also the other side where I'm I'm mourning I'm mourning what could have been what I wanted to be you know I wanted it to be my happy ever after so I'm feeling all those kind of conflicting emotions and if you're not one of those people who are aware of your emotions then that can cause or exacerbate anxiety now men for example men from young boys aren't encouraged to express their emotions so they may not be able to explain or um what's the word you know they're not very good at saying how they're feeling so they may be feeling things they can't express it you know because they're not encouraged to express it i mean even as children and i've spoken about this before we inadvertently tell children that it's wrong to express their feelings by putting them on the naughty step if they're throw a tantrum that kind of thing you know and i understand it having children is really hard work i don't want to get into that because you know that's another story but when we do things like that when we uh, shut down a child for having a tantrum and by the way kids have tantrums because they have thoughts feelings emotions they can't express them they don't have the vocabulary they can't tell you that they're anxious because they don't know if daddy's coming back from work and so they act out it's like animals animals and children are never naughty they just try and find a way to communicate their stress their anxiety and a lot of times that comes uh, out in throwing thing things or throwing themselves on the floor shouting and screaming and we tell them off for it or say things like if you don't stop crying I'll give you something to cry about and that kind of thing and that is inadvertently teaching children that it's wrong to have emotions and to express emotions and boys especially you know we're told boys don't cry all that kind of thing boys have got to be strong blah 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 so men especially are not in touch with their emotions so they may not be able to explain what they're feeling and that is why women do it as well but that is why men tend to turn more to drink and to kind of being violent you know smashing things or whatever or going out and getting in a pub brawl because it's a way of them getting their feelings out that they can't explain because men don't sit around and chat about their feelings do they it's like how you doing mate you all right how are you <laughs> You know, they don't sit down and say, do you know what, I'm feeling really sad and I'm feeling really scared today. It just doesn't happen. It should do. It really fucking should do. But it doesn't. It's becoming better, but it's not there yet. And that's why uh, more men than women tend to commit suicide, because they not only do they not feel able to express their emotions, some of them aren't even able to um verbalize that's what i was looking for verbalize their emotions and also because they feel a pressure especially if they have a family they feel the pressure to hold it together 
to be the strong one for the family. And that's why the uh, suicide rate is highest among men, because they don't have an outlet for their feelings and they just get to the point where they can't handle it anymore. And the thing is with people who commit suicide or who try and commit suicide, and I've been there, you don't actually want to die. You just can't face another day feeling the way you're feeling. So it's not actually that you want to die. You just can't face another day. You know, it's not something like you have a bad day and you just wake up one, one, one. Oh, that's it. Had enough. It builds up over months and months and months. And because it seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel, you think I just can't cope with this anymore. And which is why it's so, so important and why I'm so open about my own mental health struggles, because it needs to become normal. It needs to become normal. You know, people say I'm brave for being so honest. And that's, you know, I, I, you know, I'm thankful that people think that, but it needs to become the norm. So when you say, how are you today? Instead of saying, yeah, I'm fine. How are you? You can say, well, actually, I'm having a shit day. But back to anxiety. So, yeah, so you may be very sensitive. You may be an empath. You may not realize you're an empath. And especially, as I say, this year, that's where I was after I went off on a tangent, <laughs> especially with this year, and say we've all felt every emotion possible. I know the first thing I thought is the 20th of March, we went to lockdown. My first thought was, how the fuck am I going to feed all my animals? I wasn't worried about getting ill. I was worried, how am I going to look after my animals? How the fuck, you know, and I remember that first week, I was waking up at like two, three o'clock in the morning in fear, in abject fear, thinking, how the fuck am I going to make money? How am I going to cope? And I know I'm not the only one. And so we've, and then the next week it was kind of like waking up thinking, is this a dream? Fuck, no, it's not a dream. It is real. And so all those kind of things. So we can have days where we think, yes, everything's going to be fine. And then fuck, how am I going to cope? So we're, you know, I think people who are prone to anxiety, it's been 10x this year. It's been like the dial's gone shh, right up and it's no surprise. So we need to protect ourselves energetically. Whether you identify as an empath or not, we need to protect ourselves energetically, which is why, and I said this yesterday, I do not read the news. I do not watch the news because it's full of bad news. It's full of depressing stuff. And I remember one day, I've told this story before, but even I was shocked about it. I was when going in Sainsbury's and I was like really happy and, da, 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 and I just happened to glance at the newspaper, at the headline and can't what it was about but it was doom and gloom as always uh, and I literally felt a heaviness descend on me I literally felt my energy shift it's like just I couldn't believe how intense it was I literally felt myself go oh fuck I might as well give up you know life is hopeless life is you know and that's the thing if you're constantly feeding yourself with negativity like that that is going to lower your vibration you know, we're all vibrating. Everything in, on this earth, or every, including the earth, is energy. And it's all vibrating at a different level. And we kind of want to stay in the middle. You know, low vibration is like boredom, despondency, guilt, shame, grief, all those kind of things. High vibration is obviously happiness, joy, excitement, ecstasy, bliss, blah, blah, blah. And it's not possible to be woo all the time. It would be lovely, but it's not possible to be, you know, high vibing all the time because life's not like that. We all have problems. And the one thing, the simplest thing that has literally changed my life, many things have, but really changed a lot for me was recently I made the decision and I was only going to do it for 24 hours, but it was so powerful. I've stuck with it is to not judge anything as either good or bad, right or wrong. So, and that day, it's really interesting, that morning, later on that day, I bumped into my soon-to-be ex-husband and he told me that maybe I might not be able to uh, start my classes again as planned because of lockdown and blah, blah, blah. And I started getting, oh, for fuck's sake, blah, blah, blah. and I then started laughing because I thought, hang on, you're supposed to be like not judging anything. You're supposed to not be judging anything as good or bad. And so I laughed because when we make a commitment when we um decide to do something the universe will provide opportunities to prove to yourself that you can do it it's like when you go on a diet and people bring cake into the office it's not to tempt you it's so you can prove that you can actually say no and so i just started laughing and in that moment all that went just went just like that because I was deciding that it wasn't good, it wasn't bad. It was just, it just is. And 
doing that makes me realize how often we judge things like you're late for work oh for fuck's sake whereas if you can just say okay i'm late nothing i can do about it it's not good it's not bad i'm late and that has enabled me to stay in neutral so i'm not all the time not yeah love is great although i do go up there but i'm also not going oh for fuck's sake angry stressed and it's not necessarily easy it will challenge you but I've had other people, other clients come to me and say, fucking hell, that's changed my life. Just that simple thing. Just making the decision that whatever happens, big or small, it just is. It's not good. It's not bad. It's not positive. It's not negative. It just is. She said, it's changed my life as well. Just that simple decision. Because apart from anything else, how often has something bad happened, something that you thought was really bad and turned out for the best? And so we've wasted all that stress and anxiety and da, 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 and it's turned out all right. So by choosing not to judge it, you can stay in that neutral state. So you can keep your vibration on the level instead of being stressed, happy, oh, pissed off, oh, da, 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 because that's how we go. You know, a song comes on the radio, we're happy. The postman doesn't deliver our parcel, we're pissed off. We get what we want in Sainsbury's, we're happy. We just get stuck at traffic lights, we're pissed off. So it keeps you on a kind of level. Going back to protecting yourself. So you need to find ways to protect yourself. And things like not watching the news, not joining in uh, discussions. I mean, it's like, I'm sure you've had a time when someone's put something on Facebook and you've disagreed with it. And you're like, oh, I'm going to tell them. I'm gonna... And it's ended up in a, a big, long, heated debate. And afterwards, you may have thought, why have I just wasted an hour? You know, they think that. I think this. Who cares? I'm not going to change their mind. They're not going to change my mind. Why bother? Why bother? And so it's finding ways you can protect yourself like that. Choosing to use your time and energy, getting involved in an argument, or just thinking, okay, you think what you think, I think what I think. Let's just carry on. You know, I mean, it's like I have different views about the coronavirus. So a lot of my friends are really for the vaccine and, and all that kind of thing. I still love them. They still love me, even though we have different views. And I resist the urge to jump in with my opinion because I know it's my opinion, just mine. And I know I won't change their mind. They won't change mine. So why waste my energy getting annoyed, getting angry, getting frustrated, having an argument for nothing? So find ways, find the things that lower your vibration. I mean, as uh, who is it? Adele. That's who I was listening to yesterday. She said, no one ever feels good after watching a news broadcast because it's mostly bad news. And here's something you may not know. Many years ago, someone decided to try and bring out a newspaper that was nothing but good news. It was all good things that happened. It didn't sell. No one bought it because people aren't interested in good news. We like, in some ways, to listen to the doom and gloom. Strange, but true. No one bought the paper. So if you find, like I said yesterday, if you find scrolling through Facebook stresses you out because you start comparing yourself or start thinking, should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? Stop it. Stop it. It's about becoming really, really super aware of your triggers, constantly checking in with your body, constantly noticing how you feel in your body. So you notice when you get that kind of tension or you notice when you get that heaviness. You notice when you get anything that makes you feel less than neutral, that makes you feel less than, I don't like using the word happy because happiness means a lot of uh, different things to all sorts of people, but anything that makes you feel less than good and then stop doing it. Just simply stop doing it. You don't need to know what's going on in the world. You don't need to. You can't change it. So stop it. So, and that also um, comes in with our environment. We need to make sure we're in a healthy environment. And I don't just necessarily mean your garden outside. I mean the people you surround yourself with, the books you read. It is crazy, absolutely crazy. The books you read, the music you listen to, the people around you, because it all affects our energy. And if you look into epigenetics, which is the study of environment on our genes, because just a side note, genes need to be switched on on or off. So you may have 
a uh what's the word you may be at risk of developing certain cancer for example because so many people in your family have have had it but those genes still need to be switched on so you could have two people in the same family one of them looks after themselves get lots of fresh air and exercise uh doesn't hold on to grudges the other one drinks smokes eats junk food is really pissed off and angry never forgives anyone never says sorry whatever that second person is more likely to develop cancer even though they may be identical twins because of their environment your environment is everything everything you see everything you hear everything you speak everything you listen to everything you read everything you say all of it absolutely all of it so really be ferocious about your environment i am so ferocious about protecting my boundaries i'm so ferocious about not allowing or not agreeing to anything or doing anything or going anywhere that I know will lower my vibration which is why I don't watch the news why I don't listen to the news because I know it lowers my vibration I don't watch um animal cruelty videos because it has me in fucking tears I remember starting watching one once it was about uh the meat trade in China and I watched 10 seconds seeing cats in crates and I was sobbing for like two hours and that helps no one whereas i want to make it my mission to earn as much fucking money as possible so that i can go over to china and buy all the cats that way i can help getting sad getting miserable getting depressed doesn't help so we don't really need to know what's going on so be really ferocious and if that means not seeing family members or friends who bring you down who stress you out who make you feel anything less than sparkly cut them out it really is that important if it was your physical health say someone had was really toxic and like had some really disease that they were going to give to you you wouldn't let them near you it's the same thing you've got to be so protective of your energy field and you've got to protect your mind from what shit is going in and that includes listening to people who are negative listening to people who are moaning complaining listening to people who tell you you can't do xyz whatever and really snip away anything that is less than loving positive and supportive you really you have to it's for your health because your emotional health has a direct impact on your physical health you know the people they and the government um messages to stay safe but actually getting lots of fresh air doing mindful movement eating fresh fruits uh, focusing on your wellness are the best things you can do to strengthen your immune system getting stressed worried staying at home with a uh, central heating is bad for your, for your immune system but that's another story so you yeah, really set boundaries because if you are healthy and happy and when i say healthy i mean physically mentally emotionally and spiritually you help those around you you help those around you by looking after yourself first so really work out learn your triggers learn what makes you anxious learn what uh, causes you anxiety learn about what as i say makes you feel anything less than sparkly and cut it out be prepared to walk away really be strict with it i mean some people um maybe people pleasers you know and you think it's your priority in life to make other people happy i'll let you into a little secret here it's not it's not your your job your responsibility to make anyone happy you cannot make anyone happy otherwise there'd be no stressed anxious or depressed people because you just go around with your magic wand saying you're happy you're happy you're happy you're happy it is not possible and by the way people pleasing is a sign of low self-worth no self-worth no self-esteem and i can help you with that so keep your vibrations high or try and maintain that neutrality so nothing is either good or bad and really be ferocious about your boundaries and also prioritize prioritize what is really important to you you know a lot of anxiety and overwhelmed comes when we are trying to live up to other people's expectations or what we perceive to be their expectations so you may think someone expects you to do xyz when actually fact they don't so really be selfish you know it's not selfish to be selfish because if i wasn't selfish 
I wouldn't be able to serve my students. I wouldn't be able to serve you because I'd be saying yes to everything and I'd end up being burnt out and I wouldn't be able to give my best. When I say yes to something, I know I can give it 100%. I know I can give it my full attention and commitment. Whereas when you're saying yes to everything, you literally, you burn yourself out and you're no good to anyone. So even if you have kids, if you have a partner, whatever, you need to put yourself first. You need to be selfish at times. Say no when it's a no. And that goes back to, uh, I did a while ago, if you're saying yes when you mean no, that can make you ill. And it does because you don't really want to say yes, but I won't because that's another live and I'll point you in that direction if you want to know. But be able to know what your boundaries are, set them in stone as if you're building a brick wall around you so that you can protect yourself. If you want to protect yourself energetically, you can do what I do. I visualize myself in a big bubble, a bubble of golden light, almost like I'm floating around the Zorb ball to protect any negative shit coming in. The other thing to do is also, I might say that for another time actually, because that's another big topic. Yeah, da, da, da. Yeah, I'm just going to give you three very easy breathing techniques that you can do. And breathe, breath work is so, so important. Firstly, because oxygen is our body's fuel. And if we're not getting enough oxygen in, that in itself makes you feel anxious because you're starving your brain. So that will trigger off your um, automatic nervous system, which is like a warning, warning, something's going on. So, and when we get stressed and anxious, we tend to breathe very shallowly. We breathe up here. And again, it gets to kind of catch 22. You're not breathing properly. That causes you to feel anxious so that you feel more anxious. And that makes your breath even shallower. So breathing is so, so important. It's something that we all do, obviously, but not many of us do it properly. And not only can it help you calm down, it can also give you more energy because you're getting more, more fuel in. And the first technique, it um, activates the vagus nerve, which is the longest nerve in the body, which triggers your parasympathetic nervous system, which is what brings you to a state of calm. I always remember parasympathetic because I think of parachute coming down. <laughs> and so it's so simple. All you do is you place one hand on your chest, one hand on your belly, and just notice for a second which hand moves. Now, if no hand moves, eh, you really need this exercise. If just your top hand moves, your um, chest, then you need this exercise. You want to imagine when you watch a baby, or like a really young baby, their belly expands. So I want you to try and expand your belly. So when you start to breathe in, imagine breathing into your bottom hand that is just below your belly button. Feel your belly expand. Allow it to relax. Keep breathing in. Feel your rib cage expand. It's like a basket. Keep breathing in, feel your chest rise. And as you breathe out, you breathe out, feel your chest relax. Keep breathing out, feel your rib cage, imagine your rib cage contracting. And keep breathing out till you feel your belly button pull in towards your spine. And just taking a few deep breaths like that belly, ribs, chest. And exhaling chest, ribs, belly, and trying to extend the breath each time. And even just a couple of breaths like that will start to activate your parasympathetic nervous system. And you'll find, because our lungs are like balloons and their muscles, unlike any other muscle, they can be um, trained to work more efficiently. And the more oxygen you draw in, the more you stretch the balloons, the deeper your breath can be. And the other thing is having your hands on your body touches very healing, very calming, which is why we naturally instinctively touch someone when they're upset. You know, we touch them on the shoulder or the arm. And it's why we when we bump your elbow or whatever, you rub it. It's because we instinctively, intuitively know that touch is healing. So as well as that deep breathing, having your hands on your body also um, activates the parasympathetic nervous system. And another thing you can do is with your lower hand is just gently press your thumb into your belly button. Remember our belly button is our link to the womb, is linked to a time when we felt safe, nurtured, cocooned, when we were inside our, our mother. And just very gentle 
uh, pressure on there. You don't have to like get right in, but just a gentle pressure on there also helps to calm the body down. Now, obviously the longer you do it, so like 10, 15 breaths or even longer if you want, the, the more benefits, but even just taking a couple, if you're at work or something, and you just take yourself up into the toilet and take a couple of really deep breaths, you will start to notice your anxiety, whatever, coming down. The other thing is it also uh, takes your mind off it. So you could count the breath, you could count. Notice how long you can breathe in for. So as you're breathing, you're just counting in your mind. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the same on the exhale. And just notice how long your breath is. And if you practice this for like five, 10 minutes, you'll notice that you might start off at a six. You can only breathe in for six and out for six. And then you might be able to add one. And after a while, you can go up to 10, 15, 20, because you're like balloons where you keep filling, uh, filling with air and letting them go again, they stretch. So they become more efficient. And it also clears out the shit from our lungs and it will calm you down. Another simple breath that you can use, again, you might wanna do this uh, at home, but you just bring your thumb and index fingers together. That's Gyan Mudra, Mudra of Wisdom. And you breathe in through the nose. It doesn't matter how many counts, but as you breathe in, you lift the arms up like that. Just bring the arms up and really tense, really feel tension. And as you exhale through the mouth, you bring your hands down and you can exhale like a deep sign. You can think to yourself a word like peace or calm or let go. So it looked like... So it doesn't matter how many breaths in, but really feel tension, really tense your shoulders, tense your arms, and then let everything relax as you breathe out, saying your word, whatever that might be. And again, that also starts to train your parasympathetic nervous system. Another one you can do, which is really good for the uh, parasympathetic nervous system because it naturally puts you in a stress response but it's doing it in a healthy way and the thing the reason it's good for you is because you are training your mind and body to um, deal with stressful situations without panicking so you you literally hold the breath you hold the breath for as long as you can. And if you've not done this before, your mind, your ego will start going, oh, I need to breathe, I need to breathe, I need to breathe. I'm going to suffocate. I'm going to hyperventilate. I'm going to... But that's just your ego mind. And the more you do it, the longer you can hold your breath. And that ego mind going, oh my God, I need to breathe. That is your stress response kicking in. But because you're doing it deliberately, because it's in a controlled way, when you find yourself in a stressful situation in your daily life, you get to the stage where you're like, okay, I can deal with this. Yeah, I've, I've been here. I know what this is like. It's, it's absolutely fine. So all you do is you literally breathe in as deeply as you can, belly, ribs, chest. And you just hold the breath for as long as you can. And to start with, it might only be a couple of seconds. I know if I've been doing a long set of breath work, I can hold my breath for almost up to a minute, I think I've got to. But to start with, it'll only be a few seconds. As soon as that voice comes in, oh my God, I need to breathe, just remind yourself that you've got so much oxygen in your lungs and there's so much oxygen in your cells and in the room that you're not going to suffocate. Then you breathe out and you breathe out and you feel your lungs empty, you feel your belly button pull in, squeezing all the air out, and then again, you hold the breath out and just see how long you can hold it out. Usually you'll be able to hold it out longer than you can hold it in, but everyone's different. And again, you'll start to notice, maybe within a few seconds, your ego starts to think, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, panic, panic, panic. Just acknowledge that voice. As soon as you hear that voice, see if you can hold it for at least another two seconds before you breathe in. And you do that for about five, 10 minutes, and you'll notice each time you can hold your breath for longer and longer and longer. And you still might have that kind of panicky feeling, but you, you know it, you've been here before, you know you're not gonna suffocate because you're choosing to pause the breath. You know you can take that breath anytime you want. 
So you can just breathe in, again, breathe in as deeply as you can so you can visualize your lungs filled with energy and just holding the breath, holding the breath. Think of pausing the breath, again, just counting in your mind, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I need to breathe, 10, 11, and let it go. Again, as you breathe out, think of getting all the air out, breathing out till your belly button pulls in, again, holding the breath out, counting in your mind. One, two, three, four, five, six. I feel like I need to breathe, I feel like I need to breathe. Eight, nine, 10, and breathe in. And each time, you'll be able to hold it a bit longer, longer, longer. Yeah, I, I could I could only do one. I could only do one length, but um, yeah, I'm not, I don't know if I could do it now. But um, I haven't tried for ages. But yeah, I used to be able to swim a whole length, but two and a half lengths. That's pretty pretty epic. But you 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 uh, train your lungs, don't you? You strengthen your lungs and say, if I do like five ten minutes of breath of fire, which is a, a rapid <laughs> breath. After that, I can hold my breath for, for say up to a minute. Whereas if I was just to do it now without pre-breath pre-breath work it would only be for a few seconds but it's it trains your body trains your lungs and also trains your mind because you're as I say you're putting yourself in a stress uh, response but you're doing it in a healthy healing way so your body gets used to it it's like okay yeah i, I know it's cool i can handle it it's fine it's not a problem and um, but it's something you need to practice every day so that it becomes like an anchor and an anchor is something that triggers a response. And the best way to describe an anchor is like you hear a song that reminds you of a holiday you enjoyed or like the song that was played at my wedding. And as soon as you hear that song, you feel happy, you feel good. Or you may smell some perfume that reminds you of your, your nan. That's what a, an anchor is. And if you practice breath work, it becomes an anchor so that as soon if you're out in a stressful situation wherever you are as soon as you start to take deep breaths your body goes oh yeah i remember this i can do this this brings me to a state of calm and that becomes an anchor because we need to work on these things you know things like anxiety depression aren't just going to poof go away and in this day and age we all want a quick fix we all want just someone to wave a magic wand and it doesn't work like that we need to work and take responsibility for our own health and well-being in all levels mentally physically spiritually energetically on all levels but we can do it the other things you could try are finding a way to healthily express your emotions so if you get anxious if you get stressed let it out Go and shout and scream. Go and hit a pillow or something. Find a way to express it and allow it to move through you. Because if you're just holding on to it, that is when it's going to end up showing up in illness, disease, aches, pains, headaches, stomach ache, all sorts of things. And also don't make yourself wrong. You know, when we get stressed or angry at ourselves, that just adds on the pressure. You know, so don't make yourself wrong for feeling anxious. You know, because it's when we make ourselves wrong and say that adds on pressure so acceptance acceptance okay this is how i'm feeling right now and always add the right now because that reminds you that it's not forever that's like when i was going through a really bad state of depression as soon as that came to me acceptance this is how i feel right now and instantly i felt calm because I wasn't beating myself up. I wasn't getting fed up with myself. I wasn't getting pissed off with myself. I wasn't feeling guilty. I wasn't feeling frustrated. I was still depressed, but I wasn't adding all the other shit on. So if you are feeling anxiety, just accept it. Say, okay, this is how I feel right now. It's not forever. Then ask yourself, what, you know, what is causing the anxiety? Going back to the things I said yesterday. So you can check out that video, but have something in place so i would uh, advise having like morning and evening routines which come in with your protecting yourself energetically have things that will raise your vibrations have as well as protecting your vibrations as well as not doing the things that make you feel like shit as long as not doing the things that lower your vibrations have things that raise them because we don't always give as much um thought to our mood as we do what we're going to wear what we have for breakfast 
you know we just kind of let the day dictate our feelings and we need to find ways to choose our attitude to choose what what mood we want to be in otherwise you're just going to get more affected by what's going on I and mean, i have i have morning routines and i have a list of questions and things that i go through every morning like i'm happy and grateful for blah 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 i i try and think of all the things i've got to look forward to that day and all that kind of thing because i want to set my mindset if i just let stuff happen to me i'm probably going to end up in a shitty mood because i'm affected by all different other things because i'm not working on a mindset as i say to people if you're not working on your happiness you are working on your unhappiness. And I think actually that's such an important topic that I'm going to save that to go into more detail in another live because that is just so, so important because most of us just let life happen to us. Most of us just let everything that's going on around us dictate whether we're happy or not. And it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way, but it takes time and effort but as I always say, it takes time and effort to be depressed, to be anxious, to be stressed, to be all that shit. So it's worth putting into place because if, for example, you hit the snooze button six times in the morning and then you get up and you run around stressed and you're listening to the news and then you're late and you get stuck in traffic, that's not going to set you up for a, a good, happy day, is it? So it's about finding a way so that you get to decide what mood you're going to be in that day but i'm going to talk about that another day because i've been waffling for long enough <laughs> and i hopefully i've given you enough to think about for today so go away practice your breathing and practice makes progress practice makes progress there is no such thing as perfect you cannot get it wrong but practice it practice it and you will notice a difference i promise you so enjoy the rest of your day, beautiful souls. If anything has resonated with you, if you need want any questions, if there's something you want me to talk about or something you want me to go into in more detail, explain in more detail, if you know of anyone else who will benefit from this, please share, tag, invite people, everything, and uh, have an amazing rest of the day. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mwah! Love and light to you.